So I came downstairs this morning to check on my beer. I was quite surprised when I looked over and I saw that my jar of star sand that my blow off tube runs into was nearly empty. Wait, what? I'm not happy about that. Am I worried that it's gonna ruin the batch? A little bit. Will two to three cups of star sand in your fermenting beer actually hurt the beer? Stay tuned to find out. 82 degrees in the garage right now. It's actually over 90. I think it's like 94 outside right now. It's the hottest day of the year so far, which means it is time for very drinkable beers. Cheers. Do I have something on my face? It's the baby grain bill. It's tiny. Look at that thing. Tiny. Grain bill is so small that I didn't even have to use one of my big buckets. I fit it all in one of my small buckets here. My tastes in beer change with the seasons. As it starts warming up, I really, I start craving like lighter, more drinkable styles of beer. One of the beers that I was super impressed with last year, that I, it was a huge surprise to me because I've never been a big fan of sour beers, was the Berliner Weiss that I made. And it was delicious. So, I'm gonna give a Berliner Weiss a shot again, but this time, I don't really wanna wait and do the whole kettle sour. I don't wanna wait around for months to years to do like a traditional sour. So I'm gonna check out Philly Sour Yeast. I'm excited for this one. It's a tiny grain bill. It's like five pounds. Basically half wheat and half Pilsner malt. Lalamond's website and a couple other people that I've watched when they're brewing with the Philly sour yeast, that yeast produces more lactic acid when there's glucose in there. So I am gonna throw in two ounces of corn sugar and that's basically just to make sure that I get a little bit more of that tartness that I'm looking for in a sour beer. seven IBUs of Motueka. There it is. Not a lot. nailed my starting gravity, 1030. So I should be looking at about a 3% beer. Everything went pretty smooth and overall pretty quick brew day, a little over two hours. It's, it's 615 right now. Started around four o'clock, so can't wait for this one to be finished and to try this one out. So I came downstairs this morning to check on my beer in the fermenter there. But I was quite surprised when I looked over and I saw that my jar of star sand that my blow off tube runs into was nearly empty. And I clearly remember filling it like almost halfway full. What I'm assuming happened is I pitched my yeast at about 77, 78 degrees and then I put my fermenter inside my chamber here set at 70 degrees. So it's about seven or eight degrees that it needed to crash down to. I don't know, you probably already know where I'm going with this. I had some negative pressure and it was in a sense kind of like a quick little cold crash creating that negative pressure which pulled in the sanitizer back into my fermenter. So probably doesn't have a great flavor. So am I happy about it getting sucked back into my beer? No. Am I worried that it's gonna ruin the batch? A little bit. I'm gonna ferment it out. We're gonna see what happens. So stay tuned to find out. Will two to three cups of star sand actually hurt the beer. It's a beautiful day and I need a beer. I'll be right back. That's better. Did three cups of star sand inside my beer hurt the beer? A little freaked out. The color of it matches my yellow shirt. <laughs> Almost exactly. Fermentation took about 48 hours to get started. A little freaked out. Now that could have been because there was sanitizer in there but 
I also think that could have been because I only pitched one packet of Philly sour yeast in there. So according to their pitch rate calculator that they have on the Lalamond website, two packs of yeast would have been the way to go for that. So that was kind of my bad there. Final Gravity on Brewfather was saying it should have been a 1007 and it didn't get any lower than 1010. A little freaked out. So it also didn't finish quite as dry as I thought it should or it was expecting it to and therefore came out being Final Gravity 1010, leaving me with 2.6% alcohol, which it is great in my opinion because it's 12 o'clock on Sunday afternoon. I can have a beer. It's not gonna make me take a nap or anything like that. It's just a nice, light, refreshing beer. On the aroma, you can definitely tell that it's a sour beer. It smells, it, it smells a little juice. It smells kind of like a juice, like almost like a lemon, like a like a, a lemon juice or lemonade. You can smell that it's a sour beer. You absolutely can smell it. It smells really refreshing. So flavor, taste-wise, it is light. It is refreshing. It's almost a little too light. I almost feel like it's a little watery, and I think that would that would be changed if it were, if I were to ferment it down, it would be have a little drier finish. I think you would get dryness instead of wateriness. It's not that it's really that bad. I mean, I can handle it. It's tart, not sour. I would actually prefer it to be a little bit more puckery. The last time that I made a sour beer, I kettle soured it, and I, I preferred the result of that over this. This is not bad, but if I'm gonna do a sour beer again, I think I'm gonna go the kettle sour route. At the end of the day, it's light, it's refreshing. I get a little bit of that wheat flavor in there. Don't know if I taste the hops at all. I've never had Motueka other than in this beer, and because it's sour, I think that kind of masks a little bit of any of the hop, and I only put seven IBUs in there. So it's definitely not bitter, but it does have a little bit of that like lemon-lime kind of citrus feel, so that could be the Motueka coming out too. I think that is a great hop to use for a sour beer based on just the flavor profile. It's kind of got that lime tinge. I think that's great for a sour beer. It's light. It's refreshing. If you're looking for an easy sour beer, the Philly, the Philly sour yeast is perfect for that. I mean, you get the little tartness of the sour. It's just not quite as puckery as I kind of hoped it would be. And I think when you kettle sour, you get a little bit more control over that. So next time I do it, I'm gonna go back the kettle sour route. If you're interested in seeing how I made the last Berliner Weiss, I would absolutely recommend clicking right up here and you can check out that Berliner Weiss that was kettle soured. Cheers, thanks for watching.